Good day. Welcome to another lesson on our Super Team Maker Entrepreneurship Master Program. Today we are looking at the skills program finance for business, how you manage finance, which generally is called finance for non-financial managers. Today you are looking at the component income statement. Remember, when it comes to financial statements, you have your income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, those are the main three and then you have the statement of owners equity and the notes so today we are looking at your income statement so we'll go into detail in terms of the, the income statement show you how to prepare an income statement how to read in an in income statement so that you can understand when you're looking at an income statement as an entrepreneur you understand what is an income statement so now income statement is it's a, one of the four com key components of uh, the financial statement. And what does it show us? What does the income statement show us? Basically, the income statement is show you, showing you the performance of a business or your business over a period of time. Generally, if you've been operating for some time, then it's over... A 12 months period or over a financial year okay and then what is the financial year a financial year is the 12 months period of operation so depending on how you registered your your business the financial year is not necessarily from january to december that is the calendar year so you can decide when you're registering a business when your financial year will start and most businesses their financial year starts from march to february and but it, you can put any any other date but generally most businesses are uh, from march to february so that they can uh, manage their their taxes in terms of their tax what do you call it their financial year because because of sars and all that and with the income statement it shows you how you performed over that period so it's a it's a your report card if you have a, a child go to school end of the year you want to see the report how did you do how did you perform that's your income state that's your income statement it's an income statement for the business so as an entrepreneur a business manager you need to be able to read the income statement because like your child's report card if you don't know how to read it it wouldn't have meaning to you because you didn't know how the, your child performed and how to help them improve on where they didn't perform well. We need to know what is an A, B, C, whatever, depending on the, the symbols that that school is using. So even with the income statement, yes, we know if you are making profit or not. I think everyone knows what is a profit. But we're not only looking at the profit. We need to look at the subjects. If I use the, your child school report, you need to look at the subject to see where you're not performing well, where you can improve and where, I, where you're doing well so that you can continue uh, improving on or implement the strategies that made you do well in certain subjects. Yes, the, the most important thing is, did you pass at school? Like the income statement, did you make profit? That's the main thing. So if you made profit in the year, it's like when you're in school, it's like you passed. If you didn't make profit, you made a loss, it's like you failed in school. So I'm just trying to make it easier to, to show you how you, you, you look at your financial performance using the, the income statement. So the important thing is making profit. That's the bottom line. It's called the bottom line, making profit. So if you made a profit in a year, it might be, okay, it will be good depending on what you're targeting. Like a learner, you can pass with a 40, whatever, 50, a D. Even with the income statement, you can make a profit. You can make a thousand rand profit. But you might find that your target was a A. To pass with the A or on the business side, your target might have, you might have wanted to achieve maybe a million rand uh, profit. You still made a profit. You didn't make a loss, which is good. Then... Did you achieve your targeted objectives? That's where now the understanding of the income statement comes in to see where did you go wrong 
in in your business okay so now going to the to the income statement as we, as we, sh we have shown you on the, the the example of the income statement you have your turnover meaning your turnover is your sales or is your revenue that you have generated money that you made from selling or providing the service that you are providing so revenue is the money that you made from your core business activities sometimes you make other income like you sell a property or you sell a car or you sell something and then you make money that's not necessarily revenue unless if you are a business that is selling cars or you are selling, selling property it will be revenue so revenue is is the sale that you made from your core business if you were a training institution that means your revenue will be money that you made from training yes there might be one where maybe you consulted on something it might it still be revenue because it is related to your core activity but if for argument's sake we sold the laptop and you made money out of it that becomes other income it's not your revenue so your revenue is the income from your key activities and there is other income that is money that you made from other things that are non uh, are not operational they are not related to your operations necessarily so that is your your top line remember i said the bottom line is your profit did you make a profit or loss the top line is your revenue okay so that then you saw on on your income statement that we showed you that you have a cost of sale figure cost of sales is the costs that are directly linked to your revenue meaning you generate the revenue there are direct costs that you need to pay like for training you need to print material you need to pay facilitators you need to to pay for the venue you need to maybe provide the learners with food you see those things are directly linked to the training to the revenue that you're making because without uh, the revenue you wouldn't pay those things directly so those are called cost of sales so if you are in retail for you to sell your your stuff you need to buy them so the cost of buying the stuff that you are selling as a retailer that is your cost of sales okay and then the cost of sales it doesn't end only with the cost of buying the product remember you need sometimes you need to transport them to your to 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 your premises that you need to also include it in your in your cost of sales and in a manufacturing setup uh, you buy what they call raw material you buy the inputs you need to convert the inputs into the products that you can sell right so the buying of the inputs it's your cost of sales right it forms part of your cost of sales is the cost of raw material the conversion process where you are converting uh, the, the raw material into your final product like your electricity that is used in the factory the labor that is used directly in the factory uh, the water that is used maybe to convert the stuff any additional things that you need to put to convert your the raw material into the final product that makes up your cost of sales right then you take the all the costs that you incurred for that year remember you will have your revenue that you made for that year the whole the total amount then you, you get the cost of sales those are the all the costs that we're talking about i mean i gave you three examples retail services and manufacturing you Put it on the rev on the total for the 12 months period or for the period that you are reporting for it might be six months whatever but for that period so you must match the revenue that you're reporting on and the, the cost that you incurred for generating that specific revenue that you are reporting on and then that is called cost of sales okay now if you take your revenue you minus your cost of sales it gives you your gross profit meaning the gross profit 
it shows you how much you're making from selling the product less the direct costs that you have incurred to produce that specific product or to make that product available then the gross profits generally it's used to to see how much money you're making directly from selling that product and that number is generally used to be to compare with other players in the market remember now going down different businesses operate differently but that gross profit it's a, one of the key figures that we need to look at to say how am i doing remember like comparing the this the your child's report card and the uh, income statement to say you need to go deeper to say yes you have passed but which subject did you do well or which subject did you perform well so even with the income statement that's what the first a key figure that you look at and assess if you are doing well at that level on the production side and remember when you're doing even supply chain i told you that money is made in supply chain either you lose money or make money in supply chain so that cost of sale is part of your supply chain to say how much did you spend compared to your industry so once you take the gross profit which is your revenue minus your cost of sales you divide if you divide it by your sales it gives you what is called a gross profit percentage so that gross profit percentage is what you use to compare with other players in the market to see if you are doing something wrong or if you are doing something good because like generally the the you find that maybe the retail sector the gross profit you find it is, is around 30 percent even for your business you need to know where is the gross profit percentage in your sector so that you will you will be able to know that now nah, there's something wrong that i'm doing in my operation or there's something good that i'm doing in my operation so that is the first key figure that gives you a, an idea of where are you in terms of financial performance do you have stuff that you need to improve in your operations either your selling price is low or you are charging a very good price or your operating uh, costs are high therefore you are making less gross profit okay. so i'll give you an example with like your, your retail sector with our uh, spaza shops are struggling to compete with one your foreign businesses or compete with your big retailers like your pick and pay shop right and all those things is because is where the problem is is the pricing one obviously not obviously but most of the time they can price at the price below or more than what the big retailers are selling for one because people will go buy from the big retailer so they need to be competitive when it comes to the price so you find that their revenue per product is lower than what it should be or what they could charge given their operating environment that's why but secondly and most importantly their cost of sales becomes too high because they don't have one the supply chain systems to make sure that they buy cheaper they're not buying in groups unlike maybe your foreign nationals because generally they buy in groups they don't buy they don't have what in business they call economies of scale meaning they don't have money to buy in bulk so that they can negotiate better prices because with large retailers the the manufacturers they are offering them at very very cheap because they buy in bulk but if you are a one man show somewhere in the village you can't you don't have the economic the scale in terms of you don't buy enough goods for you to negotiate the price so you find that you buy the your your raw material or your your stock at high price high prices and that will make your gross profit lower than it should be and if your gross profit is not market related then you are already starting on your your big foot because already you've lost money there 
in, in your gross profit because your gross profit is lower. Remember I said gross profit is your income minus your cost of sales. So if your cost of sales are high, that means your gross profit is going to be lower. And if, when the gross profit is lower, that means you are making small profit that you should or compared to the market. So that's what you need to make sure that uh, the buying, your supply chain is in order or you have an efficient supply chain processes. You are able to buy, find the best way to buy your product. And secondly, in terms of the production process, you must set up a proper uh, production uh, process, which is more efficient so that it increases your gross profit. So now, looking at the, the income statement, the first key uh, metrics that you need to look at is your gross profit. Where are you compared to your competitors? Where are you compared to the market? What can you do to improve your, your gross profit? One might be to increase your, your price or increase your revenue in terms of uh, price-wise. And two, it might be to reduce your direct costs that are related to your production. So, and most of the time, where you can play in is to reduce your, your operating cost. So find an efficient way of buying, find an efficient way of producing and selling your, your product. That will improve your gross profit. Okay, now that you've looked at the, the gross profit, then we go a little bit further in the, in the income statement. Now you get to the other expenses, right? And as you've seen in, in the example of our income statement, we showed you that we have the revenue, we have the cost of sales, we have the gross profit. So we explain what is the revenue, cost of sales, and what is the, the gross profit. Now we're going to the expenses other expenses remember we've addressed the expenses that are directly related to the product that you're selling or the service that you're providing then in the other expenses you have uh, generally we have five key expenses that you have that you need to record in your income statement remember those expenses must be for the period that you are reporting for so if you are reporting for the financial year, 1st January, 1st March, 2023 to 28 February, 2024. Then the expenses that you need to account for that financial year are the expenses that you have incurred in that period. And okay, remember with the bookkeeping, uh, I'm to mention something to say incurred. I don't, I'm not saying paid, I'm saying incurred. Meaning the difference between paid and incurred means okay paid is the expenses that you paid for you don't record the expenses that you paid for because you might pay for uh, the expenses that happened last year you might pay it this year it doesn't mean you have to record it in the income statement of this year you record it in the income statement of the in the year that it happened okay must be clear so incurred means you record the expenses that you uh, created let's say uh, I bought a laptop on credit so I need to record that laptop in this financial year even if I'm gonna pay pay for it in 2026 but the expense for that laptop I incurred it this year so I became liable to paying it this year it doesn't matter the deal that we entered into but even though I'm gonna pay it in 2026 but I've incurred that expenses. I've committed to that expenses and I was liable for it. So you need to make sure that once you incur an expense, it doesn't matter if you paid for it or not. Once you have committed and legally, you are supposed to pay for it. You recognize it in the year that you were legally supposed to pay for it. That's where, how you recognize an expense. You don't recognize it when you pay it, you recognize it when you incur it you committed you signed the contract or you are legally bound to pay for it when you pay for it is a different story but once you're legally bound to pay and the other party is expecting payment or 
you've got an obligation to pay it then that's when you record it in your income statement it doesn't matter if you paid for it you paid for it or not so in when it comes to the expenses generally the expenses are, are broken down into five categories right uh, you have your operating expenses which are related to the operations but they're not directly related to the product but they are operating let's say if you are a let's say a training institution you pay electricity for you to operate right then even if you're not running training you still need to pay the electricity for the training center warm whatever no those things we need to still to maintain the, the training facility you still have to make sure that the training facility is cleaned and is in good order you need to make sure that the, the laptops or the training equipment are serviced and all those things remember as i'm saying these things you can see these things are directly related to the services that you're providing right if you're not providing these services you are not going to incur those expenses like your electricity for the training center uh, your laptop or or maintenance of uh, your, your equipment or rental if you pay rent rent is your operating expense because your operations you need to pay for it to operate right but it doesn't mean you're gonna run trainings but you still have to pay for it for you to be able to operate those are called operating expenses so with the operations but they must be linked to the operation like rent and your water and electricity your equipment maintenance and all those things the uh, water that your learners and the operation needs to run those you are quite categorized as your operating expenses right and you can record them individually depending on how big the business is right you can record them individually water and electricity uh, rent paid uh, computer maintenance or if you are you are paying maybe a service fee for certain um, applications that you avoid then you have your your software fees that you pay those are operating expenses then you can break them down individually and record them individually in your income statement right that's the operating expenses and as i've said it's very important you record the transaction for a specific period in that period that you have incurred those expenses that's operating expenses then you get to the administration expenses that mean expenses are the expenses that you pay they are not related to the operations but they're just administration administrative purposes you might find that you have a telephone okay you're not only using telephone to run the training if we're using training as an example you're not using a telephone to run the training you are using the telephone to manage the business to do other things right so I, that's why it becomes more of your your admin expenses you need to print certain things you need to print uh, the financials for example you need to print certain things so the printing and stationery you have to use the stationery to write uh, you need to pay your bank charges those now becomes your administrative uh, expenses that call like mean expenses as i said you can also record them individually or you can lump them together as admin expenses like we've showed you in our uh, the the financial statement that is generated by our super deal maker app in there we consolidate your operating expenses your uh, admin expenses your marketing expenses your salaries uh, your interest and then your depreciation so we we combine them together so that you can read them in a way that you can understand where the problem is if you are measuring your performance you can see 
Do I have challenges with my administration expenses? Do I have challenges with my operating expenses? Do I have challenges with my marketing? Or do I have challenges with my interest or my depreciation? So that's how the Super Deal Maker app prepares the income statement for you. But remember, if you are doing it on your own, whatever, if you are accountant, you can either group them together as the way the Super Deal Maker application is doing, or you can put them individually in your income statement, right? Or you can put them together how the Super Deal Maker app is doing and have an additional one where you have your detailed income statement as part of your, your financial. So you can have the summary income statement and then or financial performance, statement of financial performance. That's a fancy way for your income statement. And you can have the detailed income statement as part of your your financials it depends what is your your preference and now i was talking about the the admin expenses admin expenses are those who you have to pay to run your administration you need to buy stationery you need to pay the phones uh, such things you need to uh, <coughs> make sure that people are in the safe environment whatever you need to comply with you need to pay the accountant for preparing the financials if you are not using your uh, our super team maker app to generate your financials if you still want to use the accountant you need to pay the accountant there are legal fees that you pay those expenses are for the business but they're not related to the operation remember we spoke about operating expenses and we spoke about the cost of sales so admin expenses are not operating expenses or are not part of your cost of sales are just the expenses that you pay to to get your business going okay and then we go into the category of uh, your marketing expenses your marketing expenses are the expenses that you pay to sell your product okay so your marketing expenses will be like your advertising your, your maybe you print brochures and stuff like that yeah, the transporting or maybe going to uh, travel to meet customers and do uh, business or con to try to convince them to sell the business to them and you have commissions that you pay or sales agents and all those things so the marketing expenses are the expenses that you incur to sell your product that classify under your marketing expenses okay those are the three key expenses i said your operating expenses your admin expenses and your your marketing expenses so those now you take the the amounts for the year you put them in your income statement and remember as i, I was saying with the student uh, report to say you look at the components that you're not doing well so if you, you classify them as operating uh, admin and marketing you can see where you're spending your money are you spending more money on operating or on admin on or on marketing and how is the industry out there so that you can be able to evaluate how are you doing compared to the industry how are you doing compared to your peers because you, you're not operating in a in an island you need to see how competitive you are so that you can continuously improve the performance that's why the income statement the fancy words they now okay it's not fancy now they call it a statement of performance or performance statement because it shows you how you perform me okay so now once you have those expenses remember you have your gross profit which is the amount that you made after you you've taken the sales you minus your cost of sales you have your gross profit now from that gross profit you minus this three category of expenses all of them doesn't matter how you present them you minus those then you get your operating profit or operating loss right that's the bottom it's not the bottom line it's, it's an operating profit why they call it operating profit because it's a profit that you are making from directly from your operations not from the product Remember, gross profit is the profit that you're making from the product directly, the costs that are related to their product. After the costs that you're related to, now you take the costs that are related to 
the operations other costs that are related to the operations you minus them from your gross profit you get your operating profit so that operating profit it shows you operationally how are you doing that figure is the figure that similar to what you did with your gross profit you can compare it with the competitor you can compare it with the statistics that are there when it comes to to the industry that you are in to see if you are uh, performing well or you are in line with the industry and if you are not in line if you are doing better great look at the stuff that you are doing that we are doing better on and continue continue improve that and try to see if you can apply them to other things but if you're not doing well when you look at your operating profit then you go back remember now we have about five six components that we looked at we looked at your revenue we looked at your cost of sales we looked at your gross profit we looked at your other expenses which are operating admin and marketing expenses now we're at your your operating profit so you look at all this to say how am i doing compared to the industry how am i doing compared to the previous years because remember when you're monitoring your performance one you look at the industry how the industry is doing but also you look at how you've been doing from the previous years has anything changed am i consistent with the previous year remember when you're looking at the performance or when you're analyzing your performance they say trend is your friend right things must be following a certain trend a good trend but there might be a bad trend that you are seeing when you're looking at these numbers am i doing bad on this one is the trend going down as the percentage of sales do I, am i is my gross profit improving gross profit percentage improving is my operating profit percentage improving which is gross profit percentage is you take your your operating profit you divide it with your revenue then you get a percentage the, that's the percentage that because in numbers it becomes difficult to compare but in percentages it's easier to compare with other industry with big players maybe listed companies and all those things in your sector you look at that number how are they doing because the, that's that's the the vision that's where we're going how are the listed companies or big companies are doing how is their gross profit compared to mine how can i improve on that how's my their operating profit percentage compared to mine okay. then if there's area for improvement you do your research you investigate what can you do better where can you improve for you to match their gross profit percentage then you also look at historical how have i been doing what what has been my gross profit percentage right and then you you look at it is it improving is it going in the right direction if it's not going to in the in the right direction then you look at the other components that we just discussed now to see if there's anything that you can do from there as i said trend is your friend you look at the trends and you don't look them in isolation as i said you can look at your listed companies in the same sector they might give you an idea or guidance in terms of how how you're supposed to be doing when it comes to your operating uh, expenses all right so now we're at operating expenses or operating income level is revenue minus cost of sales we go to the gross profit then we minus the operating expenses which are your expenses from operation which is the operating expenses marketing expenses and admin expenses then we are at your your operating profit now from the operating profit then you get uh, the non operating expenses which one main one is your depreciation and your 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 interest okay you need to touch on these two now what is depreciation Depre depreciation is a quite a non cash item they call as they call it in the finance term it's non cash because you are not necessarily paying money for it but as you use the equipment as you use your assets 
they lose value. Now, as they lose value, the accountants or the finance industry wanted to see how are you performing, taking into account that your assets are losing value. Because you can say you are doing well, you are making a profit, and while your assets are losing value, <clears throat> maybe after five years, six years, the assets are depleted or they are no longer working the way they are supposed to. You need to replace them. Then you don't have money to replace them or you are not showing how you are actually doing after taking into account the money that you are going to need to use to replace those assets. So your performance will be fictitious without you showing that for me to generate this income that I've made, I've used this asset. Okay. Oh, I've made a mistake. Sorry. I forgot to address the, the salaries, which are, it's a payroll. It's also part of the expenses. And we generally report the, the payroll separately. So payroll is the money that, all the money that you spend on your employees, employee related. It can be training. It can be, UIF, PayUSN, um, bonuses, you record them under payroll. So you're going to have operating expenses, you're going to have admin expenses, you're going to have marketing expenses, and you're going to have your payroll expenses. Salaries consolidated in there, you add them together, they give you your, your payroll. Okay, it's also included in your, <coughs> your operating expenses. Apologies for that. Okay, so now with the after you got the operating profit, now we are at depreciation. So with depreciation, then the, there are standards that you need to use. Like for plant and equipment, generally you depreciate the asset over five years. So accounting wise, I know practically they go way longer than five years, but accounting wise, they'll say a plant and equipment, you can use it for, it become economically beneficial for five years. If it's a computer, they say it becomes economically beneficial for three years. If it's a finish and fitting, I think it's 10 years. It's acceptable to use 10 years or five years or three years on computers. That's general equipment. And other equipment, you can even go on a SARS. They have a schedule to show you how to depreciate your assets. Because if you don't follow the depreciation rate, it means the depreciation rate. Meaning, if it's five years, that means every year you need to take 20%, 20% from the asset and put it as depreciation figure in your income statement. If it's 10 years, that means you need to take 10%, 10% of the equipment that you are depreciating. You put it in your income statement. If, for instance, it's, it's computers, you need to take a 33% each year. You put it in in your depreciation it becomes your depreciation expense so you're going to take the depreciation from the equip all the equipment from your finishing and fittings from your uh, building if you're depreciating the building which is allowed to depreciate by five percent which doesn't make sense but you're allowed to depreciate it by five percent and if you're depreciating equipment by 20 percent whatever you can edit all those numbers that when i make your your depreciation right so that depreciation amount if you are not using the rates that are similar to that source is using your financial statements becomes a little bit complicated now because you're going to have when you're calculating your tax there will be a taxable your taxable income will be different with your operating income so you're going to have a different profit than SARS. So you're going to create what is called deferred tax and it's a, then we'll deal with it when you're dealing with the balance sheet. But now it becomes a complicated thing that you don't need. So to keep your books simple, make sure that you use the depreciation that is acceptable to SARS. So there is a schedule that SARS published to say you're allowed to depreciate this thing at this percentage then you can also you can use the same so that you don't have complication of deferred tax yes if you are big and it's worth it for you to it makes business sense for you to use a different depreciation rate by all means you can do that but it's not ideal 
for a small business you don't want to complicate your your, your financial records by and but depreciation on its own is it's non-cash item so it's not going to change the price of bread so but by you now starting to depreciate things funny different the different to the way SARS is doing it, you're just complicating your life. So it will be best if you just look at the SARS schedule and you depreciate the, the, the assets the way SARS is doing it. It's, it's that simple. And uh, I, when I spoke about the, the building, remember uh, the building, you can if into, call it um, treat it as investment property where you determine your asset, ascertain the value of the property at the end of the financial year then you adjust it if you make a gain or loss on that instead of depreciating a building you can be fancy to say yeah you are looking at it as, as, as an investment property not not as an asset as an operating asset not as an operating but as, a, as an investment asset then you you re-evaluate it each at the financial end, then you reevaluate. You see if the property value went up or down. Then you make that revaluation adjustment in your income statement. That's, but that's the fancier way of doing it. If again, if you are doing, it's important for you to do things that way. It makes business sense. But it's just the 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 accounting way. I'm just telling you the way they allow what accounting allow you to do but doesn't mean it's something that you you have to do okay so now that's your, your depreciation component and those rates right remember when i showed you the financial statement i showed you the accounting policy it must be in your accounting policy to decide how you depreciate your assets so it's something if your equipment you are using 20 uh, percent it must be part of your accounting policy. If the computer is 33%, whatever the depreciation rate that you're using, it must be part of your, your, your accounting policy. And it must be there in your financial to state that this is how I'm depreciating my assets. It's very, very important to make sure that the financials are prepared the way they, they're supposed to be, to be prepared. Okay, that's the depreciation expense, right? Then you get the interest. After depreciation, then you have interest. Because that, that op excuse me, that operating profit, sometimes they call it earnings before interest, before depreciation, amortization, and interest. But don't get confused about that term. That term just means operating profit. So now we have our operating profit. Now we have our depreciation. Then the next item is our interest. With interest, is the interest that you pay. If you borrowed money, you have loans, you have a debt, or you didn't pay people on time and all those things. That's the interest that you pay. It's recorded separately and it's not recorded in the operating expenses because it makes it's not an operating expense. It's a financing expense. So from there, you record your income. It's for the year. Remember, all these are for... The period that you were operating, don't take interest from whenever and you record it in this year. You record them over the period that you are recording, you are preparing the income statement. If it's for the last 12 months, you only record the in interest that you have incurred over the last 12 months. Okay. Then you take the total of your, your, your interest, then you put it in your financials. Then you're gonna minus your depreciation. You're gonna minus your depreciation and your interest from your operating profit. Then you get your net profit for the year. That's the main figure. Remember when you started, I mentioned the chance report and your financial, your income statement. It shows that if you passed or not. So now the last figure is your net profit. Is the bottom line. It shows, it shows if you passed or not. But obviously, you need to interpret it to see is the, if you take that net profit, you divide it by your sales, it will give you a percentage. So you use that percentage to see last year, are you doing better than last year? Are you doing better than the industry? If you are not doing better than the industry, as I said, like when I said, talked about operating profit and when I talked about the gross profit, you look where 
are you not doing good above you look at all the components of your income statement and assess why am i not achieving the net profit percentage that i wanted to to achieve where am i going wrong that's how you use your income statement that is the summary of the income statement how you you prepare it and how you read it and how you interpret the figures in your income statement i thank you